So we are talking today about the things that we're grateful for, and that's why we had you write that entire list. I want you to keep that list close by. We're going to be in Luke chapter 15. This past week, as we head into winter, winter kind of hit a little quicker than everyone thought it was going to. The snow, we all thought it was going to snow and kind of go away, but actually the cold weather started to come with it as well. And so whenever that happens, there are certain things that you want to do around your house just to get things ready and, and you know, for the whole winter break. So one of the things I was doing was we have uh, the, the house that we had moved into a year or so ago, the people that what part of what had come up with it, come with it was this hot tub. But we don't use the hot tub because it's like they're so expensive to you know keep running. So we had it filled and then I emptied the thing out and it's just been kind of sitting there. But one of the things you want to do is maybe we'll use it for a little while or else I'll winterize it. So I'm going through the process of getting the whole thing ready and going through and I realize I don't have the stuff that I need. And as I'm going through and doing it, I get the whole thing done ready or what I thought was ready and it won't work. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So I go through all the different stuff and I go through all the different steps and I'm sure I missed four or five of the dumb steps on there of what I was supposed to do, but nothing was working. So I'm like, all right, just kind of take a step back from it. Not a big deal, you know, um, and start going through it. So I go in to grab my laptop to go through the different instructions that I'm going through it, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four, all that kind of stuff. And my phone was next to me and the battery was, had, had the, the, like got to the point where it said, you need to plug this thing in, you know, the battery battery's dying in 10% or whatever it is. So I go to plug the phone in, and as I plug the phone in, I put it down, and as I turned, the cord kind of got caught, and it fell on the ground, and it bent in a certain way. Now, I'd just done this a couple days before that, but the way it bent this time, now I have to put the thing in a certain way where it hits, and then you have to prop it up, like on a side, and then to see if it's actually charging. So, like, you're holding it, and then, like, you step back, and it goes for a couple seconds, and you're good, and you're like, nobody move in the house because my phone's charging, and if I don't have my phone, I'm going to die kind of thing. So, I get it to the right spot. We're good to go. And then I go back to this, the instructions and I look over and the little, mine has a, like a little uh, meter on it, which the bar is going like red and it keeps going. It shows that it's charging. Well, it stops. So I have to stop and I go back to it. I did this like five or six times and I was going crazy. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I'm like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get this other cord that I have in my car because we can't just have one cord in our house. We have to have a cord in the car as well. I go get the cord. I bring it out. I plug the thing in. I go to plug it in the phone and all of a sudden there's something happening happened to it and the block thing that I had that was plugged into it, it just stopped working. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So I found another block and I plugged in that block and when I went to plug it in that block to go on the phone, that cord had now broken. I had somehow fried that. So now I've got a hot tub that, that I, we don't use, that I, I don't know how to run and don't know how to get the thing set. I've broken one cord and a second cord and then I broke the actual charger thing you know, that actually goes into this. And this is all like in 10 minutes and I'm thinking, I'm trying to get my house ready for winter and I'm like breaking thing after thing. So I told Deanna, I screwed this stuff, I messed this up and I bring this stuff out and I'm holding the cord and the, the two cords, which for whatever reason, sometimes we keep those and we think, oh, they're going to start working later and they never do. So I'm like, I'm going to actually throw those things out. So I grab both of those and I grab the charger thing and as I was coming in, I see Deanna and she could tell that I'm going to give her a hug because I was stopped by to give her a hug and she's like, don't touch me. Don't you, I mean, you know, look at all the stuff you're holding. I'm afraid you're going to break something. So I take it and I throw all the stuff out and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to get away from this. I'm going to go in the back and I'm going to work on something else. I worked on three different things and on that, on that day, I broke seven different things. <laughs> or seven different things broke on me. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I, like, I, was, I started to keep a list of all the things that I screwed up. So I have my to-do list. It's over here that was this long. And now it's this long because of the things that either broke or I broke as I was going through and doing this. And I'm thinking, you know, what do I do here? I mean, it's, this is like my own stupidity on some of these things. I know the things are things that I can't help and I can complain about it or I can stop and go look at there's got to be a reason that this is all happening and that reason is I should never touch anything to try and fix it because I'm not a Mr. Fix-It guy I want to think I'm a Mr. Fix-It guy like every once in a while I'll fix something and I'll, I mean like I'm bringing the whole family I'm like did you see that I mean like I fixed that and they're like dad the water was on and you turned it off there was one drip you just moved it to the side and now it's not dripping big deal but no, no 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 I fixed it you know in my mind I'm that fix-it guy or at least close enough to fix it and it's difficult for me because I come from a family of MacGyvers. Not my family. My dad was a MacGyver kind of guy, but Deanna's family, it's like they can look at something, they can hear it, they go through and they can hit three different buttons and then like it's fixed. And then later when the same thing happens, I'm like, I try to hit the three buttons and it's still broken. And I don't understand how that works, but that's the family that I come from. So I could be grateful to have this family. I could be grateful that I have these things that are breaking. I could be grateful to the fact that I even have this time to go and try and fix these things that I obviously 
you really can't fix. And as I'm going through trying to learn so that I can hopefully one day be grateful for actually fixing some things. But too much or too often what ends up happening to us is we get upset about those things. We get angry about those things. You know, it's like we have this dumb hot tub thing we don't even use. It's, you know, it, it costs an arm and a leg, so we stop having this thing. You know what? Um, the, the, the cell phone, you probably didn't need to have it that day anyway. You've got this charger block. You've got six things plugged into it. You really need to have six things plugged into it. The other stuff that you tried to fix, you haven't used it in a year anyway, so why are you trying to fix it? And it starts to take us away, and we focus on all of those negatives, and we get stuck in those negatives, we become ungrateful. It's very easy to have happen to us, especially at this time of year. The clocks are moved back an hour. We're tired more quickly. And you, I know everyone here has said this. They're sitting down, they're like, oh my goodness, what time is it? And you look at your clock and it's like, it's 6.03. And you're like, it feels like 9.30. It feels like 10 o'clock. Like, I'm ready to go to bed. And then you have to fight for three or four more hours to stay awake just so you can go to bed. What happens in those three or four more hours? You're, you're, you're nitpicking about everything. You're angry about stuff. That sets you off. You've got to be kidding me. You're constantly checking the clock to see if you can get to the point where you can go to bed. All these things take place during this time of the year. And then then, here's the next thing that happens. All of a sudden, we know it's coming up on Christmas, and people have already put their lights out and stuff at, at, before Halloween, and we see this stuff out, and we complain about this, and we complain about that, and then someone somewhere along the way is going to say this to you, and you're going to get mad about it. You're going to walk out, and they're going to go, Happy Holidays, and because of the time of the year, you're going to be like, Hey, bro, you couldn't say Merry Christmas? You know, why can't we say Merry Christmas? Oh, is this like a corporate thing? Or, I mean, it'll go through us, and we'll complain all the way out. We find so many reasons to complain about stuff, or for things to set us off or for things to tick us off that we lose sight of the very blessings that God has given us. And when that happens, we have become ungrateful. And next week, the, the following Thursday, is a, is a time that we're all going to celebrate called Thanksgiving. And if we have family that's coming in together, and if we have time together that we can spend with family, and if we eat a big meal and we have all those other kind of things, we should find reasons to be grateful. But we shouldn't wait until that Thursday. we got to start doing it now. Because what's coming next is Christmas. And we need to be this light during this darkest time of the year because there are so many people that don't have the ability and so many people that just can't celebrate the way that we celebrate. So if we can count those reasons to be grateful, if we can count those reasons to be thankful, then we can share that with others. So this week, I want you to focus upon some of those things as far as being grateful. But before we do, let's dive in and see what God's Word teaches us when it comes to this subject. The prodigal son is what this is known as. I told Rick before we started today, I said I could probably teach on this. I could teach us 52 different ways. We could start in January. We want to have the 2020, you know, the, the, the site, the vision thing for next year. Let's just teach on the prodigal son for 52 straight weeks because there's so many lessons that can be taught in here. We taught around this around Father's Day in 2018. Here it is, we're heading into Thanksgiving in 2019, and it'll be a completely different message. So if you've heard this story before, pretend like you have it. If you've heard this story again, once again, know that you can use this in so many different situations. There are so many messages within this that you can use personally and I can use personally for my life. But today, it's about being grateful. Today, it's about counting those blessings. And today, it's about Jesus having a conversation with all the people around him so that they can understand that you are going to lose something at some time. In, the chapter, in chapter 15 of Luke, this is what's known as the lost chapter because there were things that were being lost. But in the first part, they were losing things. They lost coins, that kind of stuff, where people had to go and find the very thing that they lost. And they brought all these other people around for them to find this thing that they lost. But Jesus changed it, and then he all of a sudden used it around a person or people that we can learn from today. So as you know it as the, the lost or the prodigal son is this message, just I want to make sure that you understand this. The prodigal son is nowhere in the Bible. That's something that we have given it the name to. Some of your Bibles may just say the lost son. The word prodigal means wasteful. So prodigal is the wasteful son. He's the one son that, you know, he's never going to have a savings account. He's never going to have an IRA. He's never going to have a retirement. He's just flying by the seat of his pants. He's just going from paycheck to paycheck. He doesn't really care. He's aloof. All those other kind of things. For, for some people sitting here right now, that's you. If not, it's one of your siblings. If not, it may be your spouse. And for the person that is the one that's like, I've got a plan. I've got to figure things out. I have to have it step by step. It's really frustrating for them to see people like that because they're like, you're not taking care of what God has given you. But at the same time, when you get upset with that person... 
Are you taking care of that person that God has blessed you with? So that's part of the message today around the people, and this is what we need to focus on. So chapter 15 of Luke, starting at verse 11, is where we're going to pick up. This is what the verse, first verse says. Mike, I found the broken piece to the guitar. I'll put it over by your guitar. All right. Jesus continued. So he's having a conversation. He's been telling them about the different things that are lost. And he's sharing this with all the people that can hear. For everyone that can hear. He says, Jesus continued. He said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So whenever money was passed down in a family at this time, you had an older son, and you had a younger son, or you had multiple sons, and you divvied it up based on the age. So the oldest son was supposed to be the one that was the most responsible. It was up to them to carry the family name on, all those other kind of things. So they would get, in this case, they would get two-thirds of the estate, where the youngest son would get one-third. So all we know right now is that of these two sons, the young son has come to a place where he's like, hey, give me my money. I, I know that there's a, uh, there's a inheritance out there, but wherever this inheritance is, at this this time, I want my share. So this is actually a really good thing for the older son because if it continues to grow, whatever, whatever is left there now, he gets all of it. So if he had $100 at this time, $33 is going to go to the youngest son, $67 is going to go to the oldest son, but if that 100 turns into 1000 and then it turns into 10000 and then 100000 all of that goes to the older son. So the older son should be really, really happy right now because he's looking at the younger son going, what an idiot. He's going to take his money now and cash out and my dad's business has been growing and growing and growing. He started off with one location. Now he's got three. In, in five years he's going to have ten. Then he's going to have fifteen. We're going to be making money hand over fist and oh my goodness go and take your money and get out of here. You idiot younger brother of mine. So the younger brother demands this and this is where I'm going to stop for a second. If this were your son and he came to you right now and he said, all right, everyone gets an inheritance. I know we get the inheritance and I have mine. I want you to give me my inheritance right now. So give me my money. I am cashing out. How would you treat that? For some of you, you're like, no problem. I don't have anything. So here he goes, 13 cents. We can move on. You're that guy that's like him that just wants to go out and spend. For others, it's like, you know what? How dare you be that brash? How dare you think that you can just come and all of a sudden take everything that I've built, everything that I've made, and you just think you can take yours and go ahead and go. But this guy does something that I don't think any of us would have done. He said nothing. He didn't say a word about it. He didn't go through and say, hey, listen, you know what? Here's a life lesson. Let, let me teach you this. You take this now, and you're not going to have anything for later. You take this now and spend it. Everything I'm building for you is, is going to be gone. If, if you need to have this right now, this instant gratification for what it is you want, are you sure this, that your want is outweighing your needs? Because down the road, there's going to be so much more. He doesn't have that conversation at all. This father does what none of us would do. It says, so he divided his property between... Notice he didn't say he just gave it to him. He divided the property between them. So here's this $100 I have. I'm putting your 33 over here and I'm putting your 67 over here. So that way for the older son, he's got his money that's sitting there. Now, no matter what, even if he goes out of business, even if he loses all the franchises, even if he loses all the locations, his oldest son still has his inheritance to that time, to that point. Because he had divided it up. But the youngest son takes his inheritance and watch what he does with it. It says, not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and he set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. So all the stuff that his dad had given him, everything, that, every part of it, he had taken off and he said, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to sow my wild oats. I'm going to buy a Lamborghini. I'm going to drive all over Europe. I'm going to hike in Italy. I'm going to do, you name it, I'm doing it. I don't even care. You know why? My dad gave me everything. And it was mine. And I deserved it. See, now we look at it with our younger son, or with that younger son, and if we're the dad, we're the parent, whatever it might be, and we're like, man, what an ungrateful punk. How dare him do that? 
you know what? But here's the thing. If he wants to be that ungrateful, if that's where he wants to be, that's fine. I'm moving on and, I, and I'm done with it. And see, many times we do that in relationships we have. Why is that? It's that way because we can't find a way to be grateful in those relationships. We point to all the other things that person is doing wrong and all the other things that person has done to screw up. And we can't even find a reason to, to pick up a phone, to send a text message, to stop by and say hello or whatever it might be. Because, why? They were ungrateful and because of it, we become ungrateful. So his, this son being ungrateful forced us to be ungrateful. And guess what? You can't control the son. You can only control you. And so you could call that son or you could text that son or you could email that son or you could stop by and bring a casserole for that son or bring a pie for that son and they might still be ungrateful and he might go, you only brought me a pie? Where's my dinner? You only brought me a dinner? Where, you know, where's the dessert? You only brought... And he could go and continue to be ungrateful. But don't allow someone, other, other person being ungrateful cause you to be ungrateful because it happens easily. It can happen where we work. It can happen in our community. It can happen in the things that we hear. It, is, it can be contagious. Your choice of being ungrateful is your choice to the situation. See, an event took place for this father to have the ability to be ungrateful. But a second event took place for him to be even further as far as being as ungrateful. Everything that he had built for him was gone now. And what did he squander it on? Wild living. Whatever he wanted to do. Whatever was in the moment. He wasn't listening for his father's words. He wasn't focusing on what it is that his dad had done. He didn't even care. He wanted to live his way. And that's the first area you have to be careful. If you are so living in your way and how you choose and what the things that you want to do and what you demand and what you deserve, you're going to be ungrateful. And what ends up happening is it affects all the people around you. And the person that's ungrateful doesn't care. But see, we need to focus on being grateful. We need to find that silver lining. We need to find the positive sides to this. And the Father is going to show us here as we go through. Because whoever this guy is, is a pretty amazing guy. But he's got two sons. And the youngest son, from what we found out so far, is just this ungrateful punk that wants to do what he wants to do. He doesn't even think about anyone else other than himself. He goes off and heads off and he squanders on wild living. He says, after, after he had spent everything... There was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. See, he's in a faraway country. He's somewhere where his family isn't. So if you're close by, you can turn to Dad to say, Dad, man, there's a famine, and hey, hey, listen, I've got extra food in the freezer. I've got extra stuff out in the barn. You know, just grab what you got to grab to eat. It may not be exactly what you want, but at least there's food there I can get you fed. Hey, you know, we're struggling. Listen, let me help you out with the food side of it. That's something that I can do. You know, we've got the fields. We've got the cattle. Don't worry about it. We'll get through this. I know there's a famine. You know, but my, you know, my, my kids, and I, listen, that's what we're here to do. We help one another. He couldn't do any of those things. He couldn't send to, you know, to Vimo. He couldn't have him you know, send something through Apple. He couldn't do Western Union. He couldn't do any of those other kind of things. He's on his own. So now he's stuck. And he is in complete need. Go ahead and go to the next verse. It says, So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent in his fields to feed pigs. One, another version talked about this, and it says literally that this young son went to this landowner. And he talked his way into the worst job that there was. Let me feed the pigs. Allow me to feed your pigs. And this is very important because in this culture, the Jews would not touch pigs. You could not have any association with pigs. They were considered the most unclean of all the animals. So you couldn't even touch them or be around them. And if you were, you couldn't go to the temple. You couldn't worship. You've got to go through a whole cleansing process. All these things. This guy was in such need. This young son had so much that he needed this time. He was willing to forsake everything just to get by. Which I think most of us would do. He was willing to talk to this farmer and say, would you give me the opportunity just to feed your pigs? Even though, from where I'm from, that would be looked down upon. So it says, he, he, who sent him to his, field, or his fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. There's these pods, if you've ever seen these kind of like leathery, rounded things that are kind of reddish leathery, those are pods. So sometimes these, are, these kinds would be sweetened. Sometimes they would have thorns. And the reason they were
they were fed to the pigs is because a pig could take its snout and actually go into this thing if it had thorns and pull the fruit that was out of it, the good stuff to be able to eat without poking itself and bleeding. The other pods that they have were considered for sweetener. We sometimes use them for chocolate and things like that. And they could go through and open the, the shells on them and then go in and eat these. But no one would take the time to do that. That was beneath them. But the pigs, this was an easy way because you could pick these things up off the ground. You could pull them out of trees and throw it in and then the pigs would eat it. He's looking down and saying, man, I, I will eat those things even. I'll take the time to rip these things apart because I've got to have something. I am doing the worst job I could ever do. And think about what the worst job that you've ever done is. And imagine making it that much worse so that everyone around you would look at that job and go, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Of all the things you could be doing with your life, you're doing that? He had no choice at this time. Why? Because of a choice he made. Why? Because he was ungrateful. Why? Because he was focused and intent on the things that he wanted and that he needed and he wasn't looking at the people around him. The people that loved him. The people that cared for him. The story continues. It says, he long... Oh, go back real quick. I'm sorry. Verse 16 says, He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. So now he's working, and this field owner is basically saying, we're not going to pay you until you've done the work. And oh, by the way, remember this. We're feeding the pigs, not you. So don't let me catch you. And by the way, rescue service, don't let me catch you feeding anything to this guy. He's got a job to do. He's going to get his job, and then we'll pay him, and then he can go figure it out from there. This guy's a businessman. So it goes to the next verse, and it says this. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? See, there comes a point in time when we're so ungrateful that we realize that we're being ungrateful. And it's at those moments that we'll stop long enough and say, What was I thinking? What was I doing? Why did I treat people that way? Why did I speak that way? Why did I act that way? And we can blame others and we can point to them. We can say it's because of how they act and how they treated us. But at the end of the day, once again, just like the Father, how we treat the situation, how we act within those moments, the words that we choose to use reflect upon us. How they choose to do things and how they tend to react and the words they say reflects upon them and them only. But depending on their position, maybe they can use those words. Hey, I'm in charge. Hey, I'm the manager. Hey, I'm the boss. Hey, I'm the owner. And you're just a peon worker and you're just, you know, just another guy and you're just a servant. You're just a slave. But you're going to do things my way. He finally came to his senses and realized that, you know what? God has blessed me and I missed out on that. And actually, I don't want to go too far forward because I'm saying God has blessed me. I'm using that from where we're standing. He is literally saying, I, I had all this before, and literally now I've got nothing. And so, as he says it, he says, when he came to his senses, so all of a sudden this realization took place. And that's happened to all of us at some point in some time. And if it hasn't happened to you yet, it's going to at some point in some time. Where you're going to realize that, wow, mom and dad really did take care of me. Wow, grandma and grandpa really do love me. Wow, you know what? I have a brother and a sister, and some people are only children. Oh, you know what? I'm an only child, and I have to put up with brothers and sisters, whatever it might be. There's so many ways that we can find a way to be grateful, but we tend to rest in the areas of where we can complain and where we can point to others. And through that all, through this darkest time, we get tired, we get angry, we're short-fused, everybody's out to get us, Nobody likes us. This isn't fair. At some point in some time, we have to come to our senses and realize this. The things that go through our mind, the things that go through our heart, the way that we treat people is our choice. They're the words we use. They're the thoughts that we have. They're what's going on in our heart. And that's all we can control. So, if we're going to be grateful, grateful we, he comes to his senses. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? And so he comes up with his own plan. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Go to the next verse, if you would, please. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. See, he was ungrateful... 
but he knows that he's got an out. He knows that he's got a way to kind of spin things. And so in his own mind, he has already come up with a plan as to how to fix it. How to justify it. How to make it okay. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my dad and I'll just say, hey, listen, you know what? Um, you got these servants over here. I'll just be like one of those servants. Everything will be good. Let's just call it even. Let's just kind of move on with our life because, yep, I screwed up and I threw everything away. He's not thinking about anything other than how can I get back into the good graces of my father. Because in his mind... His father is going to treat him the way he would treat his son if this were to happen. See, he came to his senses and it made sense for him that if he were to go back, that the dad would say, you know what, enough of you. I've already written you off. Look at I gave you your inheritance. It's time for you to move on. I don't have time for you. And so he was like, I know that's how he would treat it. So what I'll do is I'll just go become one of those servants like he already has. And at least that way I've got family around. At least that way I know that there's food. At least that way I know that, you know, I can get through the days. I won't have anything, but, you know, so be it. How many times do we do that with God? We've stepped into a pile of something. We've acted a certain way. We allow things to rise up within us. And then we go to try to fix it, and we try to do it our way. You know what? I treated God this way, and I said this to this people, and I did this. And so what I'll do is I'll fix this, and then God will forgive me. And then, then when I take that step, then God will stop long enough to say, Yep, okay, you're welcome. You can come back into the fold. And if you and I treat our lives that way, that means we are constantly putting ourselves ahead of God and we're telling Him how He should forgive us. And in the situation that we screwed up and we continue to mess up, God bless you, and the different areas that we can't help but be, get in our own way, we don't really need God, do we? Because we've already determined how it is that we can get God back in our good graces. When all we need to do is to walk into His grace. The verse continues and it says this. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son. Now in this culture, for a guy to do this, to run, everyone would be looking like, you've got to be kidding me. You're not, this guy is not allowed to run within this culture. He would be looked down upon just for running to his kid. He would have to hike up his robe and then run to go and see him because the way the robes are, you'd be tripping and falling over the place. So he has to hike this up and run to go see him. He does not care. You know why? Because his father is the example of grace and his father is the example of what it means to be grateful. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, he threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. He had to get to the one that he lost. He had to be where his child was. He didn't want to take any chance that, oh my goodness, he sees me, I'm off on the horizon. What if he were to turn around and to leave again? And as he sees him coming, he's filled with compassion. Why do you think that is? Well, if your son had gone off on their own because they started into drugs, they started a bad habit, they'd gone off somewhere they hadn't eaten in a long time, if you see him from a distance, you're like, what has happened to him? Because my big, strong, strapping son that I sent away with this money has come back with nothing. And now he's scrawny and he's aged and he's beaten up and the world has just kicked him in the teeth. And this father had compassion on him because he could see there was a change in him. He doesn't know what's going on in his heart. He doesn't know what he's going to share. He sees a physical change. And so he has to get there. He can do to help to fix that. His father was grateful. He knew his son had squandered everything. He knew that he had screwed up. He knew he made poor choice after poor choice. He was grateful that his son was alive. And so they had this moment together where he runs all the way to him. He throws his arm around him. He says, I love you. He kisses him. He does all these other kind of things. He's so excited. And watch what happens next. 
verse 21. It says, The son said to him, because here we go, now the plan's in place. I have sinned against heaven and against you. He's been practicing this. He's walking all the way through. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Some parents will be like, yeah, you're right. You're not. You're an idiot. You squandered everything. I gave you everything. What are you doing? You go out and you just blow it. You, you spend it on all kinds of stuff. I've heard all the stories come back. I saw the videos. I've had people call me and they've shared it with me. You're spending all this money that I made and everything that I brought up. That's how most of us would react to this. We'd remind them about it. and We'd remind them about it again and remind them about it again. But see, this guy's practice it, right? Like, this is going to give, this is my end to come back in. But the father said to his servants, he didn't speak to his son first. He said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. All of these are to signify that this is my son. I want everybody to know it's my son. He may even be unrecognizable at this point. He's so scrawny, his hair's long, his, you know, he's aged, he's all that kind of stuff. He just, he looks beaten up. I want everyone here to know that this is my son. I am so grateful for him being here. A lot of us would have stopped and said, dude, you stink. You need a shower. You've got to go and get cleaned up, and then you can get in my presence. But right now, man, whew, were you messing with the pigs? Because I smell pork. Right? With those pod things, nobody eats those. They're not around here. There's a reason for that. That's how we would handle this. Not this guy. This father is the picture of being grateful. And he's showing it. And he doesn't want to just show it for him personally. He wants everybody to be a part of this. See, that's what God does for us. Your mistake, your struggle from the past, your thing that you can't quite get right now, your step that you believe that you should be taking, but man, no one else seems to notice, your inner struggles that you have, your Heavenly Father looks at you as His child when you know Him as your Savior. And when we stop long enough to get into His presence, He wants to celebrate that. And He doesn't want to just celebrate it one-on-one. -on -one. He wants everyone to be a part of that. Because He wants to show everyone that He is grateful that you are taking that step toward Him. Go ahead and go to the next verse. It says this. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. Now this, okay, this is great. I think it's kind of funny. You go off and squander by having all these parties. You come home and you look sickly, but here's what we're going to do. Let's have a party. Right? You, you have nothing left, but I got all kinds of money. So let's have a good old, big old party. We're going to take the fattened calf. The fattened calf was set aside for the most important guest. Verse 24 says, For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, so they began to celebrate. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, what a, what a great, yay, great ending to the story, right? The father's grateful, the son's grateful, everyone's grateful. Yay, here we go. Doesn't end there. Jesus continues, next verse, and he says this. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So see, when the father was out, this, this guy's a wealthy landowner, so he's got land all over the place. While he was out greeting the son, the son was doing what he was supposed to be doing, doing his work. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, the he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Go ahead, Rick. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. And watch what happens to the brother. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. Next verse. But he answered his father, look, all these years... I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I would celebrate with my friends. Not once. All these years I've prayed. All these years I've attended church. All these years I've done the right thing. All these years I've done everything that you've asked me to do. And now my idiot brother, my loser brother who's out spending everything, all that kind of stuff, he comes back and you kill the fattened calf and you couldn't even give us a small goat? What's the older brother saying? What about me? 
I've done all the right things and I deserve something from it. And so many times when we find ourselves ungrateful, it's because someone else has something great going on and we didn't get ours yet. And so when is it our turn? When are we going to be noticed? When is someone going to see all the work that we're putting in? Why is that guy making the money? Why is that guy getting the promotion? Why does he have the nice house or the shiny car or whatever it might be? And I've got nothing. I'm over here working my tail off. Does anybody even notice? Hey, God, you wake up there? I'm doing everything you're asking me to do. What this son doesn't realize, and what many of us don't realize, is that many times God is protecting us from something, and that thing that he may be protecting, it, protecting us from is ourselves. The thing that he may be protecting us from is a situation that could take place that could literally turn our lives for the worse. And we don't even recognize it. So the, rather than being grateful and to rest in the circumstance, we step out of that protection and then when things don't happen the way we expect it, what, what do we do? We blame God for it. We blame the Father for it. We point it back at the Father. And we ask, where was ours? Some of you may right, right now may be being protected for something you can't even see it. And you're pushing and pushing and pushing because of what you want and how you should have it. And how things should look for you. And no, 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 this is how everyone else does it. And this is how the world gets away with it. And this is what I want, what I want. I, 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 me, me, me. And you can't see that God's going, hey, slow down. God's going, stop. God's going, hey, hey, just, just turn to me in this. I'll be right there for you. I'll run to you. I'm going to protect you through it. The conversation continues with this, and he says, but when has this son of yours, he, this is the older son, he says, but when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. So, and you want me to go in there with, with this guy that's throwing everything away? And you want me to go in and have a party and celebrate because of that? Where's mine, Dad? When am I going to be known as Paul? What's in it for me? Ungrateful, ungrateful, ungrateful. Man, let's look at it a different way. Man, you know what, son? You could have gone off and squandered everything. You could have gone off and made the bad choice. You could be the one with the addiction. You could be the one that is just terrible when it comes to choosing your relationships. You could be the one that, and you fill in the blank, blank for whatever it is that you struggle with the most, or that you know someone that is going through that struggle. But God watched over you through it. How are you being grateful through it and thanking Him? Lord, thank You for the protection. Lord, thank You for slowing this down. Lord, thank You for being in people in my life that I can talk to you about this. Lord, thank You for being there so that I can turn to You. But watch how the Father deals with this. Verse 31, my son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. God sent his one and only son. Everything he has, he gave us everything so that whoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. But we're so ungrateful for all the things going around that we don't recognize that very basic point of our faith. It's all yours. You're a believer. Every part of it is yours. But we had to celebrate, the Father said, and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. I want you to go back to your list that you made earlier. I'm hoping you have at least 10 things on there that you're grateful for. Some might have 15, some might have 20, some might have 100. That's great. For some of you, you haven't actually written anything for so long. You're like, man, what is this? Because we're so used to doing this all the time. We don't write anything. I want you to pick three things on there. I want you to pick the three most important things on that list to you. It's your list. 
It's your list. Mike, this is when I should have had you up here with your electric guitar. Pick three. Don't pick five. Don't pick seven. Don't pick ten. Don't say, well, these two are tied. These tie together. Don't say, I've got 30, so I'm just going to focus on that. I want you to pick three. Okay, now, I'll allow you to change these later if you want. That's up to you. I feel like you picked these for a reason. You have in front of you a list of all the things in which you're grateful for. Maybe you can add them later. But over the next coming weeks and all the way through Christmas and to the end of the year, I want you to be like the father in this story to the ones or the things, not the things, the ones that you chose within that to be grateful for, for those three things. Because I'm almost certain that you didn't pick a thing that you're most grateful for. I'm almost certain that you picked a person. See, this story gets focused around the things. He got the robe, and he got the ring, and he got the fattened calf. I didn't get the goat. I didn't get any of that stuff. I'm the one who did all the right stuff, and even though you know I have a nice house and all those other kind of things, it was stuff, stuff, stuff that was focused on. The father never focused on the stuff. The father focused on the person. He gave what he had to the son. He went out and looked for the sun every day on the horizon. He ran to the sun and held on to him. And at the end with the other son, he turned to him and said, Man, oh man, there's so much more and you're not getting the big picture. The verses end here. The story ends. And this is what Jesus does a lot of times with his parables. And so we don't know how the oldest son reacted to this. We don't know what the son did next. We don't know if he stormed off, if he said, hey, I've got my inheritance, give it to me, go. We don't, or if he wisened up. We don't know if he went in to greet his brother. We don't know any of those things. But here's the thing. You've got a list of three things in front of you that you're grateful for. And how you react to them this week and through the holiday season, all the way to the new year, is your choice. How you choose to treat the people that are on that list is your choice. But remember this, in everything we do, the choices we make reflect our Father. And the choices these guys made reflected their Father. And their Father knew it was wrong and knew the way they treated it was not the right way. But at the same time, the Father sat back and said this, focus on the things that are around my love. Look at the things in your life that have meaning. Have compassion in areas that no one else will. Because in your life and in my life, you have people that are lost. And the only way that they can be found is to come to that loving Father. That may be you today. Maybe someone within your family. It may be the person on your list that you're most grateful for. It's time for you and I to stop squandering the time and squandering everything we have and start sharing God's love and showing God's love to those people that He has blessed us with. And when we do that, we learn to be grateful. Right where you sit, if you just close your eyes and bow your head for a moment, I want you to just think about this conversation we had and discussion we had around the lost son. And really, it ended up being around the lost sons so easy for us to get lost in our circumstances that we don't recognize God's love within those circumstances. Maybe He's protecting you right now from something and you're pushing and pushing. Maybe you've already made a bad decision. He's like, no, 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 just, just come on over here, I got you. Maybe you're looking for a way out and He's ready to run to you and grab a hold of you and have compassion on you right where it is that you live. But know this, He already knows what you've gone through. He already sees the struggles. 
He already knows the comeback you're going to have for you to justify it before Him. And He loves you still. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we think about the areas in our life in which we're grateful for, God, would you help us to take this list that we just made out of, you know, just on the spur of the moment, but God, at the end of it, we chose these three things. Just as in the story, there's a father and two sons, these three things. We chose these three things in our lives that are so important. God, would you help us to be grateful for those this week? Would you help us to show others that we're grateful for them? Will you help us to share our feelings, share the love that you pour into us? And God, at the end of the day, would you help us to treat things as this father in this story did? Would you help us to see things as this father in this story did? Would you help us to react in the way that the father in this story did? Because we can truly understand this Father and His actions and the things that He says because we have You as our Heavenly Father. Lord, help us to be grateful for that and all we say and all we do. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Would you all please stand? I'm going to have you bow your heads and close your eyes for one more moment. If you've never taken that step where you've asked Christ into your heart, you're having these struggles and you're trying to fix all these things and to make it right and you wish you had all the answers and all those other kind of things. Just as the Father in this story, He looks upon you with compassion. He knows you're not alone. He knows you're not the only one with the struggles. He knows that they are everyday occurrences that we all have. But He also knows this. He loves you so much that He stopped long enough to say, I'm going to send you this gift. I'm going to give you my son. And when you accept this gift and ask Him into your heart, you can know for sure that you have a place in heaven with Him. He runs you, He throws His arms around you, and He holds you close because you recognize Him as your Father. If that's a step that you've never taken and today that's a step that you want to take, just right where you stand, we you just raise your hand? And now we get to the rest of the people in the room, which is all of us. You made a list, and on that list you had three things that you chose. And I have a feeling those three things weren't actually three things. I have a feeling they were three people. One of them may even be God. So if I could be grateful for my relationship with God and all my relationships, if I could be grateful that I have a spouse or kids or grateful that I have friends that care so much or grateful that I have teammates or whatever it might be. Maybe you're even grateful for the fact that God brings you someone new every day that you get a chance to be a light for Him. Whatever it might be. This week and next week and all the way through the year, if you're ready to show being grateful through God, would you just raise your hand right where you stand for those, th those three things that you chose. Lord, as we lift our hands up to you, God, Lord, help us to find the way to be grateful in every person that you bring into our life. Our kids, our spouses, our friends, our teammates, people in our community, people at our church, people in our small group, in our Bible study people that are homeless, people, whatever it might be, Lord, whatever it is that matters the most to us, whoever it is that matters the most to us, because they matter to you. Lord, as we sing this final verse, Lord, help us to focus upon being grateful. Help us to treat things and to treat people the way that the Father in this story treated His kids. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.